This is a spirometer. It is an example of a portable spirometer and similar to most screening spirometers. When used properly, it should provide reliable, accurate results that are simple to interpret. This spirometer comes with a base station and a printer. This unit operates off of the base. After a test has been performed and accepted, it is then placed back on the base to print out the results. The printer is designed to provide hard copies of both numerical data and graphs that become permanent records in the patient's files. Prior to performing a test, you will snap a disposable mouthpiece onto the apparatus. The keypad is used to enter the patient's information and set the spirometer to begin testing. An easy-to-read LCD screen displays instructions and numeric results. The following is a step-by-step -step guide to performing a spirometry test. Okay, Angela, when you exhale, breathe out as hard and as fast as you possibly can. You're going to exhale for six seconds. You won't feel the air leaving your lungs, so it may feel like you don't have any air left to breathe, but keep going until I tell you to stop. That's very important. Do not stop until I tell you to stop, okay? Okay. Okay. Step one, remove the spirometer from the base. Step two, turn on the spirometer. The spirometer power switch is in the back. Slide a mouthpiece onto the device until you hear a click. Check for the words, select an option, on the LCD screen. Press the key that says, ID. Step 3. Before starting a test, you will enter some patient information, beginning with the ID number. This will be a number determined by your office. Next is the patient's age, followed by height in inches, and a code number that will specify gender and race. These codes can be found in the manual for the spirometer. The screen should return to select an option. You are now ready to run a test. Select the test you want to run. In this case, you will measure the patient's FVC. Next, you can elect to place the nose clips on the patient's nose to close off the nostrils. This is to ensure that all air is being exhaled into the mouthpiece. Tell the patient to take in the deepest breath possible. The patient has to inhale completely before the mouthpiece goes into the mouth. Tell the patient to tightly seal his or her lips around the mouthpiece and to keep the air from escaping. The most important part of performing a spirometry test is to coach the patient to give what is referred to as their best effort. When the screen reads, blow, 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 direct the patient to begin blowing into the mouthpiece. And blow, 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 keep going, going, going. Stop. If you believe a patient gave a best effort, you will press yes, storing the reading in the unit's memory. OK. Ready to do it one more time? You will always conduct the test a minimum of three times to obtain best effort readings. The American Thoracic Society has identified factors that could cause inaccurate results. So when a patient blows into the mouthpiece, here's what you should watch for. Hesitation. If the patient begins to exhale and then hesitates in the slightest way, the test is no good. Coughing interrupts the exhalation process as well. <coughs> Stopping too soon. If the patient exhales for only one or two seconds, the results are not acceptable. Next is what is called a Valsalva maneuver, <coughs> when the patient closes the glottis during exhalation. When this happens, you'll hear a grunt. Should you notice any of these conditions during testing, Press the No button to negate the test. Finally, any air leaking from the mouth will also nullify the test. Often this is easy to identify because you'll hear a sound from the escaping air. Other times, it will be more subtle. If it looks as if the patient has given a best effort, but the results are variable on multiple tests, 
It may be due to an air leak around the mouth. Two readings within 200 milliliters or 10% of each other will signify a best effort. Any reading that does not fall within the 200 milliliter range will not be deemed a best effort. This is a reading that is an example of a best effort. You should familiarize yourself with reading results. The more you know, the higher the quality the testing results will be. The following are sample readings of spirometry results. Determine if the results are accurate or inaccurate. This is an example of non-consistent results. There is too much variation between the tests. The variability is 700 milliliters, that's 22% on FVC, and 410 milliliters, 17% on FEV1. That's outside the acceptable 200 milliliter, 10% range. The exhalation ended after about one second. It needs to last a constant five or six seconds for accurate FEV1 and FVC results. These results indicate obstructive disease. There's no evidence of hesitation, coughing, or stopping. This patient has COPD.